If you ever find yourself on the corner of Chive Avenue and Daisy Lane, take heed at the ladybug's warning and turn. But there are those that do not listen. Today I'll be finishing up the spooky miniature streetlight. If you haven't already, you might want to check out the first part of this series, where I show you how to make the lantern. This is certainly Caroline, with more polymer clay fairy tale nonsense. I start the stand by bending an old hot dog roasting stick into a spiral shape with my needle nose pliers. I have no doubt that a wire clothes hanger would work just as well. I wrapped thinner, more bendable wire around it and then I wrapped the whole thing in white floral tape. I'm wrapping the whole thing in floral tape because the paint will stick to it much better than if I hadn't wrapped it. I want the spiral up at the top to be more spirally, but the wire is much too stiff and thick for that, so I just used some of the thinner bendable wire and attached it to the top. Note that I wrapped it and spiraled it first before attaching it to the top. I add the second arm. Bend it into the shape I want, and then I use dark gray acrylic paint. I used Fabrifix glue to secure the embellishments. I want a sturdy street light, so I need something to weigh it down at the base. Sand will do nicely, but I'll need a good container to put the sand in. Not that. A plastic container with a lid that will work. I need a hole through the plastic, so I press down with my needle tool. Then I expand the hole a bit with some tweezers. I want a variety of shapes, so I add some beads. And I temporarily put the plastic base on so I know where to cut my wire. I happen to have medical tape hanging around the house. So I tape up the plastic base in preparation for paint. Floral tape would work just as well. I secure the beads with Fabrifix. And the base gets a few beads as well to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Finally, the fun part, I get to fill it with sand, and I am oddly satisfied. I add some glue to where the lid will sit, and then I put the lid on, and then I put tape over the lid. Now to embellish the base. I start with the Fabrifix, and then lace trim, and I'm gonna line some string up at the top of the base just for a variety of shapes and bumps and interesting things on the base. I want more of a cone shape, so I just use some cardboard. When the glue dried, I got out my paints again and painted the whole thing dark gray. I use just a little bit of white on my stiff paintbrush and I dry brush the whole thing. What am I thinking? It doesn't have enough spirally shapes, so let's get some more string on there. 
I use a real leaf as a mold to make a few polymer clay leaves. Doesn't matter the color of the clay since I'll be painting the leaves anyway. I'll put a hole in a few in case I want to string some. Moving on to the street signs. Tag board will work since I'm going to strengthen them with some medical tape. I bore the holes with my needle tool. The medical tape reinforces the holes so that they don't tear easily. And I'm sure many other types of tapes would work for this as well. I took apart an old chain necklace to hang the street signs onto the stand. I painted it black and then wrote the street name on it. I start with a white paint, let it dry, and then paint over the parts that are too thick with black paint. And basically I just repeat that process until I have the lettering look I want. I bake, paint, and string my Palmer clay leaves onto some wire. And then secure the leaves to the stand by tying them and gluing them down. Next I embellish the street signs by gluing on lace trimming and decorative metal pieces. Then I paint it. And then of course I gotta dry brush it to achieve that vintage look that we all know and love. Time to sculpt Bunny. Definitely need to look at a reference picture for a rabbit nose. What were you like when you saw it? I was like, creepy sh a bunny that looks like a camel. And Anna was like, that's a sheep. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's a sheep. I made a Sculpt Along With Me video about how to sculpt this rabbit head, and it's over 12 minutes long. My Sculpt Along With Me videos are made for the person that has their clay out and is ready to sculpt. If you're that person, you're looking for sculpting videos that are slower paced, and you don't want background music in the video because you want to play your own music while you sculpt. And you want reference photos, and you want those reference photos to remain on the screen, not pop up and then pop back down. Yeah, you know who you are. Anyway, to kick off my new Patreon page, I made a Sculpt Along With Me video where I sculpt this here bunny. If you're not familiar with Patreon, in a nutshell, Patreon connects content creators with their audience so that you can play a part in supporting the content that you love and that you want to see stay online. All that to say, if you like slower paced sculpting videos and you really want to sculpt this bunny, you might want to check out that video. Link is in the description. and we will put him in the oven. After baking him, I had to cut the back out, kind of like a puzzle piece, and I use a nice big glob of Fabri-Tac glue to secure Mr. Bunny to his stand. I use dark gray acrylic paint and I let it dry, and then I just do some dry brushing of white over that, and it gives it a nice metallic, old, dull, vintage look. I had some metal jewelry embellishments that were laying around my studio from another project, so I decided to give him a ruffle collar. I just cut the embellishments to size and glued them on with Fabri-Tac, and then painted over them. But we're not done making this thing old, we gotta age it further. I dry brush on some patina green acrylic paint, but only on a few select areas. What better way to make it look mossy than to add some moss? I used the Fabrifix to glue on some dried reindeer moss. After letting the glue dry, I pluck some of it off so I don't overdo it with the moss. I just wanna seal up that moss because it is a natural product. I go over the moss with a matte finish polyurethane. I'm using the Verithane brand because it works well with polymer clay, which means it's hanging around my studio anyway. 
So without the polyurethane, in time it can get really brittle and just kind of crumble off. The polyurethane does a nice job preventing that. If you liked this video, it'd be amazing if you could hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you won't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching.